uh, yeah, 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 uh, Miami, uh, uh, South Beach, bringing the heat, uh, <laughs> can y'all feel that, can y'all feel that, jig it out, uh, here I am in the place where I come let go In Miami, the base and the sunset low Every day like a Mardi Gras Everybody party all day, no work, all play, okay? So we sip a little something, leave the rest to spill Me and Charlie at the bar, running up a high bill Nothing less than nil Welcome back to the NBH Podcast Money buys happiness, Miami buys happiness Everything buys happiness yes. Ferraris, whatever you want, bro Everything buys happiness, food, whatever you need Listen I want to say thank you to everybody showing us love. All our subscribers, run them up. You already know what it is. Like, subscribe, do the fucking duties. I gotta stop saying that eventually because y'all should just know you have to do that already. I don't know how you guys don't do that, so. But it's all good. You don't yeah. know, but you're gonna know today. With that being said, we are welcoming back one of our favorite guests. We just love third, third time, third time. Love to chop it up with him, third time, and and you know I'm happy that it's in Miami. We're doing this again, Kane, my bro. What yes, the fuck sir. is good? What's good, man? Yeah. What's good? We back up in here. Yeah, you know we in Miami this time. Last time we was talking about Miami. Yeah, yep. and now we're here. <laughs> <laughs> it's different. It goes full circle, fam. Yeah. You already know. Yo, yeah, man, it's crazy, dude. We're excited to have you back. Hundred uh, man. I mean, yo, like going back to like when we had you on. Yo, we were talking about Miami. We were like manifesting that shit. I mean, you already mm. fucking doing it. You yeah, know, but, but like we, you, guys you saw here, the fire right? in our eyes, right? We're like, exactly. yo, we got to get there, bro. <laughs> so, yo, when did you get back here? I got back here three months ago. All right. And what, what was the plan when you came back? Like, what, what were you thinking? What was the mindset like? Well, you know, I, I had to go back home for visa reasons. Yeah. Um, and then I came back here and I was like, well, everything was happening back home, all the bullshit. So yeah. I was like, you know, fuck this. I, I'm able to go back now. Let's go back. So I, you know, I set myself up, and now we're back, and oh. and we're just taking over. I'm working on my visa right now, yeah. uh, fully transitioning here. Yeah, I'm, I'm done with Toronto. Man. Yeah, I'm both <laughs> to, I was just telling this guy I'm about to declare myself a U.S. citizen. I don't. Get, yo, we, we had we had a great guest on yesterday, actually, Aaron, Aaron yeah. Spivak, and we chopped it up with him after. Um, and he was just talking to us about like, yo, you can stay here longer if you want. You're just gonna lose your benefits of Canada. I'm like, bro, what benefits, bro? Real shit, yeah. man. <laughs> it's all an illusion. These benefits that we have, yeah, mm -hmm. right. I mean, for the general population, sure, of course, benefits, yeah, right. Yeah. But for people like us, the benefits that we get there, we could get here way better. Yeah, if yeah. we just pay for it. Exactly. And when you have money here, money talks here. That's why I like here. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's not for everybody, but for people like us. Yeah, yeah, especially when it comes to healthcare. Like, hey, yo, I'd rather pay the two, three bills. Right? Get taken. And I feel like the doctor, too, like the doctors and shit, they're like, when you're paying them, it's different. It's different. They want to take it's care private. of you. It's private, right? So they're like, they know the f like the funds are literally coming out of your pocket compared to like, even you have to remember back home in, back home in Toronto, like they're capped out because they're paid by the government. They're getting OSAP money and shit like that. So they can't even, they can't make more than a certain mm -hmm. amount of money. They get capped, right? So doctors here are like, yo, let's go, bro. Yeah, like 100%. the same way, that entrepreneur mindset, right? And, and when you compare the benefits to the taxes, it's like, okay. They don't match. Never it's all an illusion. They say yeah. benefits, but realistically, it's coming out of your paycheck and every <laughs> month. And, yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's an illusion, like I said. But, you know, at the end of the day, I I, I don't down Canada. At the end of the day, it's a good country. Yeah. If you look course. at people getting, there's people with bombs being dropped on. And I said this in the last, the last episode. It's a good country. But for people like us, entrepreneurs, we're, we're hungry alpha males. Mm -hmm. We need to go to a place where we'll strive and i just i don't necessarily agree with the decisions our government has been making and and the way the people have been supporting it and just the whole narrative down there i just could don't let agree me ask you it. something why why do you think it's being supported so much honestly man I, it's all it's all politics power yeah. and money and yeah. like i said you know i made a lot of money selling medical supplies on the back end so i see what's going on i see the billions being made on the back end so when these mandates come out i understand mm -hmm. from a business perspective this is the best business and marketing rollout i've seen in history yes yep. <laughs> marketing plan everything, everything. but True. you know the, when it, when people start telling me what to do and how to live my life and what to put in my body yeah that's where i draw the line well it's crazy bro because we're like pretty much everyone we met here like our real estate agent mortgage agent everyone, our accountant everyone. They're, yeah. they're all like bro when we tell them what's happening in canada they're surprised yeah and they have no idea they're like what? They're like, how the fuck you like allowing that? Like, yeah, like how, how are people how okay with that, right? But I guess like, in increments it happens, right? Like that's what Jordan Peterson said. Step as well, by right? step, step little, by step, little it, little yeah, increments. Like they keep moving the goalposts. They keep they keep you know pushing pushing on us. They're very it's a very aggressive 
method that they're doing when yeah. it comes mm-hmm. to our freedoms. It first started with just staying inside for a month, and next thing you know, a year later, um, you know, it's 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 just power and it's psychology yeah. and it's marketing and they're rolling it out amazingly and i don't agree with it and i hate it i think it's bad for humanity yeah. and i yeah. think it's bad for our mental health and that's why i have to get out of there the mindset over there is just it's so negative and fearful yeah and bro it's depressing know. over there at times too you know i mean we went back we were back i mean we were there yeah we were we were back and forth with some trips but when we were there bro it's like you're waking up and you're like damn bro I gotta get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah. And that's not, like I said, you said it too, right? It's not for everyone. Yeah. Some people, you know, some people don't have the luxury of just leaving. 100%. You know? And some people, uh, they don't really know what's going on because they have busy fucking lives. And they gotta, they gotta take in five minutes of news to understand what's going on. And that five minutes of news... It's fear. Is fear. Fam. Yeah. I, I turn off the news. Like, I, I heard a quote somewhere. I was like, if you don't watch the news, you're not informed. And if you watch the news, you're misinformed. <laughs> 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 Right? Facts. And there is so true. much fake news out there. And, you know, I'm starting to see it because when you come to a place like Miami, it gives you perspective on like what the world's really like and what how people are truly living and, and just like how normal things are here. Yeah. So what's the difference between Miami and Toronto? Like they were, it's a city with people in it, the same virus with the same people with the same blood. But why is things completely different? And Bro, that's when you start to ask questions, and you're like, All right. "Well, I, th- I think that was a big piece. I think we we even spoke about our last pod, and just like you, like if you left Toronto in the middle of this." pandemic i'll call it a plandemic yeah um <laughs> I, like bro like you, you you took a trip somewhere we went to mexico we also came to miami like bro and you see normal life and you're just like like you said we're we're all made up of the same shit bro why over here it's literally just normal and back home in toronto it's like wear a hazmat suit <laughs> yeah. to, to fucking to go outside bro yeah, like man. you know what i mean so you, yeah traveling was a big piece but what i what, what i wanted to ask you was like in terms of the the comparison to Toronto Miami mindsets, um, what what do you see? Like what's 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 like the comparison in mindset? I think people here just are more free and mm-hmm. liberated, and they respect each other's choices. If you want to get the vaccine, go. If you don't want to get it, it's fine. You don't need it to get anywhere. If you want to wear the mask, wear it outside like an idiot. And if you don't wear the mask, you don't have to wear it. And like another thing that I have for the viewers, guys, I sell this stuff. The mask that you buy at shoppers and all these places, they don't work. Mm. They Unless it's an ASTM level three with the BFE bacteria filtration efficiency rate of 99%. Plus, it's not protecting you against the particles of COVID. So these cloth masks and these level one general three plies, they don't work. It's literally a muzzle over your mouth. And especially outside, it's just like what? Yeah, what? It's theater, bro. It's, it's theater. theater you seen it? that? You seen that video of Desantis? Yes. He goes into. <laughs> yo, uh, he's the goat. Uh, goat the guy's bro. a goat. He goes into the university and he's like, "Yo, uh, I guess he's doing a press conference. All these kids behind him with masks on, and he, like, I guess the mic was hot, so they heard him. And he's like, guys, take the masks off.' Yeah. He's like, and then he, then he pulled back and he's like, actually, if you want to wear it, fine." But if not, take it off. Like I think got, one kid kept it on. One kid, one yeah. kid and he's one like, kid. he's like, we got to stop with this COVID theater. Yes, and that is exactly what it has been, COVID theater. And then yeah, you come here and there's no theater, bro. It's all, it's all real life. Like, yeah. you know it's funny because I mean? like even the people you do see here with like a mask on outside or some shit, you could tell they're a tourist. You could yes, tell, yeah. you could tell they're over here. Like yo, like what the fuck? Like my grandfather <laughs> came here um, about a month ago. He has a place in Naples, right? And uh, he he hit he hits my family. He's like, yo, no one's wearing a mask. Like, yo, no one's wearing a mask out here. I'm like, yo, because you don't have to. Like, you know, you just don't have yeah. to. But yo, whatever mask you just said with all those letters and numbers yeah, and yeah. shit, bro, you guys do not have those masks. You don't have that unless don't you got that. the N95 with the full wrap around around your head yeah. with the elastic. It's not working. You're not yeah. being protected. So now you just look like a dog with a muzzle on your mouth. And that's what I see it as. Yeah, I see it as they want to dehumanize us. They mm-hmm. want to make us. Scared to hug our neighbors, scared to kiss our parents, scared to kiss your girlfriend, scared to hang out with your friends. Yeah. What does that do to a society? You have to look at it on a macro scale. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what's going on right now, it's just, I think it's the biggest form of brainwashing. And, you know, I understand, like, and I'm not saying that COVID isn't real. It is 100% real. For sure. It is not fake. I don't believe it's fake. Um, But, you know. It's just, we, we all deserve freedom, and I think that's the whole beautiful thing of North America. Freedom, freedom, this is what everyone preaches, the land yeah. of opportunity. So why are you telling me what to put in my body? Why are you telling me how to live? 
Mm-hmm. It should. It's just freedom. And like, if this was a real, real deadly virus where like people are dropping, yo, we'd dead. all be dead. All three of us. All be dead. yeah, both of us. <laughs> all three of us wouldn't be here right now. That's for sure. <laughs> guys, we're living proof, guys. Yeah. And you know, some people actually do have autoimmune diseases. Some people are, are susceptible. Yeah. And they have problems. And I understand. And you know, wear your mask. Do whatever you have to do to protect yourself. But don't force it on other people. Don't try and guilt trip other people into supporting your narrative. Yeah. yeah. You know. Yeah. Damn. So, what did your family think when they came here? Because I know you brought your family over here. <laughs> had a good time. Yo, God. talk to us about that. Because that was unreal. The bro. videos that I seen of your <laughs> granny, bro, on the fucking jet ski and at the strip club, bro. bro you're a legend for doing okay. that, bro. Honestly, Legendary. it was it was a it was an amazing trip. Um, yeah. I think it did open their eyes a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it was it was amazing. I brought them down here. It's always been my dream to bring my family to places and give them new perspectives and let them expose them to the abundance that is around us because we come from generations and generations of conservative mindsets conservative living and i'm like i'm the first one in my generation to be abundant and 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 live with that abundance and speak it and enjoy it and you know prosper with it so i brought them down here and they they loved it yeah. uh, you know i brought my grandma to gold rush she was going <laughs> crazy yeah. you know and I, I you know another thing like I, i'm just i love my family so much they're they're very cool. They're mm-hmm. not, you know, and they don't push their ways on me. Yeah. You know, they, they, we, sometimes we don't have the same beliefs, but man, honestly, like it was an amazing trip. It definitely did open their eyes to see normal life again. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah. And now my mom, she's just, she wants to travel. She wants to like just up it, have fun, yeah. you know, and, yeah. and I'm so happy that I'm able to convert her. Uh, yeah. to, from the conservative mindset. I think, I think you're not even converting them, you're inspiring them, inspiring, bro, straight up. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Because I think they come here and then they see what you're doing. And I mean, they've been watching you probably mm-hmm. from time yeah. even when you're coming here, right? Yeah. So, man, that's crazy. No, Thanks it's impressive. Show. And I want I honestly want to say congratulations, Thank man, you, just brother. because being able to, you know, even just do that for your family, it's it's something that people, uh, you know, dream dream of, aspire to do, right? So the man. fact that you've done that, congrats. That's huge. Uh, they're, they are my grounding source. They yeah. Are the reason why I stay grounded, why I stay humble, because mm-hmm. you know I do everything for them, and without them, my head would be in the clouds. Yeah. Living this type of life, being surrounded by this type of stuff, you get caught up. But they remind me to never forget where you come from, yeah. and that's why I always keep it humble. I always try to inspire and teach people, because and and the reason why I post all this stuff is so I can inspire other people too, right? Because yeah. family is the grounding. A lot of these guys, they got everything, but. You're telling me you ain't bought your mom something? You ain't yeah. bringing mom out somewhere? Like, what? <laughs> yeah, what? True. You ain't no boss. Yeah. Like, you know, I'll spend my last dollar on family and never regret it. I'm already yeah. spending the money. So the way I look at it is the more you can give back to the people who brought you here, the yeah. more you will prosper in life and, and attract that 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 abundance. Yeah. Right? When you're giving back to the people that, that supported you when you had nothing. I want to ask you, I want to ask you something in terms of, because, yeah, you are very, um, I guess, out there when it comes to, like, you know, you show the text coming from your mom and your mm-hmm. granny and like, obviously you're, 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 you know, in my eyes, I see it, I see it as inspiring. Some of the stuff you post, I'm like, damn, like that's inspiring, bro. That gets me fired Makes up, me want right? to call my mom and be like, like, like let's but, go, let's get it, get you a jet like, ski. Do you ever get people coming at you trying to be like, oh, like that's not inspiring. Like you're showing off. Like, eh. Yeah, but those are haters and, and they, they, they project their insecurities on me. True. You know, I have my handful of haters, but at the end of the day, anybody who's doing it isn't hating. And anybody who has the mindset of abundance but doesn't have it yet isn't hating. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, like for all my fans and people out there, you know, that reach out to me, like when you clap for my wins, it just means you're attracting those wins for yourself. Yeah. And when I was broke, I was cheering people on. I was seeing people do this type of stuff. And I'm like, damn, I can't wait to be there. I can't wait to experience that feeling of taking your family to a big villa in Costa Rica. Yeah. Putting your granny on the jet skis and showing <laughs> her around and picking them putting mama in the Lambo yeah. and, and, and exposing them to that. But, you know, to the people that hate, it's just like, why jealousy is, I wasn't raised with jealousy and envy. I don't believe in it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's just insecurity that people project. And I'm yeah. sure you guys get your fair share of haters, <laughs> right? Yeah, bro. We, <laughs> with the bro, burner accounts, though, bro, soft. We, yeah. we had uh, our, our guest yesterday, Aaron, he, um, before, before we got on the mics, he's like, dude, when I posted that I was coming on the show, he's like, bro, hundreds of, of messages being like yo don't go if you go on that show i'm never buying another product from you stuff no like that. And, and it fired him up he's like yo i was so amped to get like, on the show because he's like yeah. yo people give a fuck about what you guys are saying right like that's number one but whether they agree or disagree so but yo, yeah. with, with that being said yo the merch that's coming soon 
I want to say something because you said something about the haters, yo. And I want to say something. It's a little hint. The more you hate, the more I make. All right. So I just want you to know that coming soon, coming soon, though. But talking about making it and, and making money. There's probably people wondering, like, yo, Kane, what the fuck you doing that, that you're able to do this? And, like, yo, like, you're doing that and you're doing that. Like, I work full time and I can't even do that. Like, so in terms of business, okay, and in terms of the moves you've been making, yeah. talk to us about that. what you're allowed to say. Yeah, yeah, I know. Of course. I know. So, you know, ever since I came down to Miami, you know, I expressed to you guys that I was inspired. I met people that were making, like, you know, millions every month. And, I, and it opened my eyes. And that's why I started surrounding myself with powerful people that are making good money. And... It, it it expanded my 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 business ventures a lot and yeah. you know i really in the last six months i fell in love deeply with passive income streams yeah and that's all i'm focused on right now so you know before i left toronto i was heavily into mining uh mining helium so yeah. that's passive income every single day we have uh something called a pam and that's a percentage allocation model and this is just automated trading by expert traders He's a busy guy. He's getting the calls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is automatic trading by by expert traders. You know, the whole goal for me is to get around 10% a month um, on your money. And it's just that passive income. So now you have the security of, yeah, I'm making 10, 20, 30K a month passively on top of everything else I'm doing. Um, I'm starting to expand into Airbnbs, automation, right? You know, ha- hiring those the, the, the companies to you know, automate the process for you. And you just put the money down. The, uh, you know, to anybody listening, it's all about making your first lump sum and then investing it right. Yeah. And opening your eyes and taking some risks because there's so much emerging markets, so many new opportunities that people are asleep to and they're not taking in because they're scared because it's so new. Anything in crypto, people are scared of. Of course. Yes, I've lost, a lo- I've lost money trying to invest, but I've definitely made much, much more taking the risk and you know the upside is 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 amazing, and I'm surrounded by the right people. Yeah. So you know a lot of passive streams. I'm still doing medical supply sales. Um, you know, selling test kits, these masks that don't work. <laughs> 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 um, you know, and um, and uh, heavily into crypto marketing. So yeah. you know NFTs, uh, crypto coins. Yeah. You know, I'm a head of marketing for uh, a new project that we're working on, Metaspace. It's a uh, virtual reality battle royale that we have coming out. Crazy. So it's everything is an NFT. It's a whole play to earn model. And we're based in the metaverse as well as hosting concerts in the metaverse. And that model is literally printing money out of thin air. And it, we're at such an early adaption rate in the whole metaverse course, thing. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's such a small percentage of people that are in it. So if we get first movers advantage with the projects that we're working on now, we will reap the benefits forever. We want to be like the Microsoft and the Apple of the of the 1990s and 2000s. Yeah. Right. We want to. It's like the internet boom is happening all over again yeah. with this whole metaverse NFT stuff. Yeah. So we said let's get ahead of the curb, and um, you know we we've been working on that type of stuff. And the cool thing with the metaverse is you're not limited to physical capacity, so you could do something. And have 10 million people watching something paying ten dollars. Yeah. yeah. Right? Never been, never been done before. Never been done. So, you know, we're working in a in a metaverse that's built on Unreal Engine 5, the same engine that built Fortnite, Call of Duty, very high graphics. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. you know, that's one of the projects we're working on. And uh, a new venture I recently entered into was uh, we, we just invested into an NFT a uh, lot like club, I guess you could say, down yeah. here in Wynwood. Nice. So Sick. we're gonna be we're official partners with Lamborghini. Uh, we're gonna have a Lamborghini lounge there. Uh, we're gonna be hosting all NFT events, streaming. We're partners with Twitch already, um, and we're gonna have a VR AR room, like augmented reality. Yeah. And artists will be able to come in and perform in this box with cameras all over them, and then we'll, we're able to record that and play it in the metaverse and monetize it ten times. It's That's crazy. crazy. It's it's literally the future, man. So you know, I'm I'm, I'm it's all about being a forward thinker. Yeah. And, and thinking ahead, where are we going to be 10 years from now? And then making a decision and to get into a venture where 10 years from now, that thing will be here. Damn, oh, bro. Stupid. Like, yo, like when, when you're speaking and, and you're and you're so confident in what you're saying and you're so passionate about what you're saying and this mindset that you have, you know, for anyone just listening to you for the first time, maybe like how the fuck did you put yourself in this kind of mindset, you know, because I feel I've watched you grow over the last yeah, few years. We both you have seen right? me from nightlife. 100 percent. Right. And, and we come from the same background. Yeah. Right. So. 
what kind of what kind of things did you do to put yourself in this space right now? Not 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 necessarily like these industries, but yourself. Like you're in the space of your own right now. Yes, I would definitely say reading. Reading mm. uh, is my, one of my biggest assets that I have. And in the younger generation, the younger we go, the less popular it is to read. Yeah. yeah. But guys, like you go to school and listen to teachers who never owned a business. So when I could go <laughs> buy a book from a billionaire. Yeah. yeah. For twenty dollars and learn way more you will ever learn from real life experiences. So that's what I did. I really heavily indulged myself in the podcast and just self help yeah. and self improvement. Yeah. And then on top of that, it's just like building your confidence level to the point that you're not betting on a business, you're not betting on an income stream, you're betting on yourself. Mm -hmm. And I've built my self confidence up to a point where I know that if everything fails, I'll figure it out. You could put me anywhere in any country and I'll figure out how to monetize and make <laughs> money. I sell water to a well, baby. <laughs> it's all about being confident and betting on yourself because at the end of the day, when I was broke and I had nothing, I betted on myself and believed in myself when nobody did. And yeah. Nobody's going to see your vision. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to see it. And people say, oh, I need to see it to believe it. But you got to believe it to see it. It's yeah. true. And to be able to manifest your reality and manifest this person that you become, that I've become. You know, when I was broke, I wasn't this person that I am now. I imagined myself to be the person I am now. And yeah. now we're here. You right? know, it's crazy you say that, right? Uh, our, our guest yesterday, he had this like really good explanation of like the feeling you have uh, like when you win. Like, for example, you you know, you, you, you close a huge deal, like something like, who knows, right? A million dollar deal, $500,000 deal, whatever. And like when it closes, you're kind of like, all right, like whatever, right? But the people around you are going crazy. Yeah. They're like, holy shit, this is insane. And you're just like, yeah, yeah, all right. And I will, I always try to figure out like why that was, right? Like when I was getting these these bigger wins, why everyone around me was so excited, but I really wasn't. And and our guest Aaron had a perfect example of it. He goes, because when you were manifesting it, when you were thinking you about were it, it, you were you you already you already celebrated it because you yeah. knew in your mind you already had that feeling 100%. when you thought about that five hundred thousand dollar deal. You already celebrated it when you were thinking about it, as 100%. if you were already there. So then, when it came, you're like, "Yeah," because I already knew this was coming. You know what I mean? I already executed to get there. So I, 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 I want to know your thoughts on that. Hundred percent. Because obviously, you've like, bro, since again, when you've seen your growth since nightlife door yeah. three, bro. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you remember, it, bro? It's crazy. So I'm like, dog. I remember walking in, picking up checks. You and uh, you and Jay's coming through, yeah. like whatever, like insane. So I'm curious, what are your thoughts on that? Like, oh, hundred percent. Like, you know. It comes to a point where things just start happening. You become desensitized to it. Mm -hmm. Of course, we always... I'm, I'm I'm lucky enough to be a very conscious person and realize in the moment that I used to dream of this, so I still celebrate it. But when these wins come in, let's say you make have a six-figure day, people are going crazy. You're like, fuck, I really... I couldn't even imagine this in the past, like making six figures in a day. Mm -hmm. But now when it happens, I think it's, it's the point of never getting comfortable. So... Yeah. You, you only, I only let myself celebrate for about five minutes. Yeah. I celebrate Great, and yeah. I'm like, okay, you're a piece of shit. Let's go. What's next? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because yeah. you always have to humble yourself. You always have to go, okay, what's next? What's next? Because if you get comfortable, then, you know, you can plateau and it's very easy in the entrepreneurial life. I'm sure we've all had it. 100%. Some months you will have a multiple six figures month. Some months you'll have zero dollars coming in. Yeah. So to stay away from that, I try to never get comfortable. And that's why, you know, when things are happening, I'm hearing millions of billions in my phone, in my business calls and business meetings, and you just kind of become desensitized to it because when you know your purpose is so much bigger, you know you're really far from where you need to be. Yeah. yeah so yeah. it's all about the perspective that you have on your wins. It's good to celebrate. It's good to feel yourself. You know, yeah. I, I love, you know, I feel myself and I congratulate myself all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's like as soon as you're done that, you got to figure out what is the next goal and just humble yourself. Yeah, I'm curious in terms of humbling yourself, right? Like, what, like, how, what's your kind of way of doing that? You know, I know, like, I know a lot of those texts coming from like yeah. your mom, your grandma, and stuff is like a, a big part of that. But what, what do you, how, how do you kind of humble yourself after a big win? Well, I humble myself by constantly leveling up my circle mm -hmm. because you know, if I had stayed in my circle that I was in five years ago, yeah, I would have stayed at the top. But I've leveled up my circle, and now I'm like in the middle yeah so there's always someone in my circle that's doing 10 times more than me making 10 times more than me so it's like sick you know 10k was a month 10k a month was a lot to me before until you're around guys who are making 100k a month mm -hmm. 100k a month was a lot to me until you're around guys who are making a mill a month yeah. and yeah. so on and so forth yeah, yeah, yeah so it's always you know 
surrounding yourself with with bosses and people that are doing better than you or inspire you to be better so you always keep leveling up and you're always humbling yourself because you know you're celebrating over here yeah i made 10 bands and then this guy's like yeah i made 100k yeah and you're like oh shit <laughs> like, i'm gonna you're shut like, the fuck up yeah, yeah. 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 so th- that's definitely a big part of it because no matter how much money i make there's always someone doing 10 times more than you it's true and you know you just always got to keep going and having that hunger deep inside. Yeah. I feel like you've been doing that for time though. And like, you're, you're still young, bro. You yeah. know? And, and, and since I known you, you've been trying to do that, put surround yourself with, with people who are doing great things and making money or, or just successful. So yeah. that's, that's very impressive. Cause I figured that out like later on, you know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. tell everyone how old you are. If I'm yeah, I just turned 23 last, last Jordan year. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's a big year. Let's go. You know? But like I said, it's age. And another thing uh, that makes me hustle so hard and so ambitious is that I realize that time is only currency. And the way that I've structured my brain to think is that every day that we we move on, my family, my mom and my grandma are getting a day closer to death. Mm. Yeah. And I look at it like that. It's like do or die. Yeah, yeah It's like savage it's mode. Savage. It's like one day they're closer to death. Yeah. So it's like, why aren't they on a private jet flying living in a fucking palace yeah. why aren't they living out their dreams yet yeah so you just you always gotta you know i structure your mind to no matter what you will always be hungrier and hungrier yeah. and hungry no matter what the win is that's, that's savage that. mode bro because a lot of people I scared f- to talk about death scared like to, that, scared to think about you, it, you know have what to mean? embrace death yeah death is gonna come yeah and we all have to face it it's true it's it's we're, it's gonna come so especially when you remind yourself and use death as a reason to to motivate you, motivate yeah. to not be mad all the time to mm-hmm. just be happy because at the end of the day wh- when you die you die <laughs> you're done we, yeah. whatever you believe happens after all i know is you die yeah. in this world yeah so whatever you believe after happens happens but all i know for sure is that i'm going to die yeah and one day i'm not going to wake up and i'm not going to be able to smell this air feel emotions and be able to to succeed and and chase my dreams and inspire people. So every single day, when you remind yourself that death is closer, it's like, I need to achieve greatness. What am I going to leave behind on this big ass earth with billions of people? What, what is my impact going to be? True. You know? So is that what, is that what you want? You want to leave, leave behind like a legacy? hundred percent, man. I don't, I don't, when I, when I want, when I die, I want the world to feel it. I want Mm. people to be inspired by my story. And another big thing that has helped me along the way is, acknowledging that I'm writing a story in every action that I make. That's yeah. why I've always been bold and taking risks because when you look back 10, 20 years from now, it's like, yeah, he did that. Yeah, yeah you know, He true. did that and he took, and when you look at the greats, Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk making Tesla's electric cars when that stuff first came out you're like what and then he's like yeah i want to go in space and people are like what yeah. and, and you don't understand until it happens and that's what happens w- when you study the the greats and the visionaries yeah. right that's what they do and and that's really how you have to you know poise yourself to just achieve greatness and, no you're and right it's those risks it's those risks that you're like you're saying the vision is the, the, the like you look at you look at elon musk I remember he he sold he was part of PayPal. He sold PayPal for like you know mil- multi millions of dollars, whatever. He took all that money, put it into fucking Tesla and SpaceX, and he's like, bro, I was taking loans from my family, while I just made multi million dollar deal that I put all back into my business. I was taking loans from my family to pay rent. Yeah, oh, bro. like bro, what a risky. But move, no one would have understood right? him at the time. Like no one understood his 100%, vision. Yeah, hundred percent. And I'm sure Elon Musk has. You know, a big a big thing with wanting to leave an impact because yeah. he's a, he's in my opinion he's one of the greatest entrepreneurs in all time. Yeah, yeah. true. Right? He's doing things that nobody nobody thought he would do. Yeah, and he's solving world problems. And you know, like realistically, after a certain point, you're good for life. Your family's oh, good for, for life. Sure. You know, and and but I don't want to settle when I get there because, mm. like I said, it's all about your vision and your purpose. Yeah. And you know, my purpose is to do more than take care of me and mine. Yeah. Once me and mine is taken care of, I want to help the world. I want to do humanitarian things. I want to go. And that's the real. Because after a certain point, money, you'll get numb to money. Yeah, it's after true. After you get to a certain point, money won't make you happy anymore. Money won't, you know, it's not going to make a difference when yeah. you have a certain amount, right? Yeah. But what will make that difference after that point is helping somebody, you know, inspiring somebody, changing lives, being able to change and help country. Like the fact that world hunger is still a thing. Crazy, yeah. yeah. They got money to put vaccines in everybody, <laughs> but true. they don't got no they money. They got money to, to go to war. Us. They got money for everything else, bro. But 
there's still homeless people. There's yeah. still people yeah. that are starving, and I, I, and I, I don't agree. Or clean water, even basic, mm. like basic necessities. So, like you know, I want to help solve those things going down the line, and and you know, later on in life after I live this glam life and I achieve my dreams and do the music and take care of me and mine. It's like I want to really, you know, leave that impact and be able to help people. I believe that's what our purpose is. You know, yeah. it's crazy. P- people will listen to you and probably think you're crazy yeah. for even saying that. Like, <laughs> oh, I want to solve these issues. Like, people are gonna look and be like, "This guy's insane." You yeah, but they I mean? would have said that three years ago if you said I'd be in Miami right yeah. now doing this, 100%. got my whip outside, no, got everything. But that's how you know <laughs> that you're doing the right thing. Yeah, that people 100%. are looking and saying, "This guy's crazy for even thinking." I love that. that thinking that he can do that, and I'm it's just like that's what you need. I'm trying to be crazy, to bro. You to keep you moving, right? But I, I want to I wanna talk about something a little bit different. Uh, not really different. It's all kind of part of the same circle. But you said something earlier on about us being, you know, entrepreneurs, alpha males. <laughs> I love, I love the term, bro. Oh. I'm happy that it's like starting we're, to make we're, it we're, we're the last of a dying breed. For, yeah, you know what? Sure. But I, I think there is like a tide turning. I think that, uh, that, you know, people are starting to recognize that that's something that the world needs again. Strong yes. men. Strong men. You know what men. I mean? And nowadays with society and all this bullshit, it's like <laughs> they, 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 they made being a man so, like, toxic. Yeah. And they, they, toxic they, they masculinity. Toxic, yeah. not toxic masculinity. <laughs> and it's like, like yeah. you know, at the end of the day, you have to lead. We need leaders. We need people that are bold. We need risk takers. We need mm-hmm. providers and protectors. Yeah. And the way that society is going, everyone's so freaking sensitive. Yeah. And it's like. Well, it's funny, right? Because you, you have to look at it like this. Uh, a lot of the people that are, let's say, complaining, oh, th- men are toxic, toxic, masculine. Nah, nah, nah. It's like, yo, the reason you are allowed to stay home in your condo and work from home and you have electricity and internet and food is because. There's fucking men busting their ass in the freezing cold, the rain, the heat, keeping the power lines up, 100%. delivering the fucking 100%. food, right? Like, but but that's the thing, right? So Twitter like, fingers, but the Twitter fingers don't like it. Uh, no, nah, yeah. but 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 you know, it's like uh, like I, I wish people would take a step back and look at their life and say, damn, a big part of the reason my life is so convenient is because of alpha males, bro. Yes. It's because those guys busting their fucking asses in the, in. Blazing heat, pouring rain, snow, the cold. Keep power lines up. Do this. Keep the roads smooth. H- how, how do you think the food got to your fucking door, bro? How do you think? How do you think you're on your little laptop watching your little bullshit on Netflix? Like men, hundred <laughs> percent. You know I what totally I mean? Men, and men literally put in the sweat, break their fucking backs, their bones, not only to make sure you can do that, but also to put food on their table for their fucking families and 100%, provide. Right? 100%. And, and, and it's so overlooked, bro. And, and, you, and you know what it is? Everyone wants to say, oh, you're so pri- You guys can sit in front of these cameras and these mics and say that. You're so privileged. It's like, no, nah, you're the fucking privileged 100%. one, bro. <laughs> you don't realize. I'm serious, bro. Like, people don't get it. And, and it pisses me off. And this is something I've been really, like, I think when we were in Tulum, like, like about a year ago, whatever, and I was snapping on my stories. I was done. I'm like, nah, because I'm seeing six bus post this shit and all these fucking... Uh, fucking purple haired fucking motherfuckers, bro. Yo, f- I fucking hate this. <laughs> yeah, 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 bro, fuck what, you, bro. What, what, what'd, what'd you post today, Noosh? What'd you yo, post okay, today, hold bro? on. Let me bring this up quick. Let me yo. bring this up, yo, because I'm cheesed off this, bro. I'll be, I'll be honest, yo. I'm, this I, I was, was crazy, cheesed bro. off this, yo. So, Six Buzz posted about this fucking teacher that went on Twitter just fucking talking about some segregation shit. So, this, this, this teacher comes on. Okay, the teacher, first of all. All right, let me talk about the teacher. All right. So, proud parent of TDSB student and also proud TDSB teacher for over 20 years. Black Lives Matter. Music is literacy. Okay. So, (laughs) this person goes on and tweets, teachers, some best practices for you to implement for March 21st. Classrooms with a segregated seating plan. Students split into masked and unmasked sections. HEPA filters. HEPA? (laughs) How you say HEPA? HEPA, HEPA. No HEPA, way. HEPA filters placed between the two. So segregating the students and then putting filters between the students, okay? Parents who choose to mask their kids will appreciate your consideration. So, okay, hold on. Peter, Mr. Peter Hasek, okay? He, they, whatever pronoun Classic, you want me to give you, no problem. Bro. They, sure. <laughs> we'll go with they. What are you talking about, bro? Because, like, yo, you just talked about you're, you're promoting segregation and you have BLM in your fucking bio. Like, what are you talking about, bro? Hey, yo, par- show, show them what he looks like. 
Yo, we're going to put a clip of this guy's head top, bro. Yo, I, I guarantee you after this week, this guy's not going to look like this because this guy has to change his whole life. Bro, there's all these news people putting shit out now about this guy. Really? Bro, this guy's probably getting death threats and hey, shit. Didn't, like, bro. Didn't, you say, didn't you say he had to change his Twitter and he changed everything? He changed his Twitter name and shit. Yo, this guy has purple hair, bro. Man looks like a pedophile. I'll tell you straight up, okay? <laughs> yo, if I see this guy, bro, we're going to have a huge problem. I swear <laughs> to God, bro. So, yo, keep your purple hair on your fucking head. Keep your opinion. That's not an opinion, bro. You're no, promoting that's segregation. Yeah, that's not an opinion. And then in your bio, you have BLM. Like, what are you talking about? HEPA and HEPA, HEPA filter? What is that? <laughs> HEPA is to clean the air from the dust, fam. Yeah. <laughs> what are the you only th dust is this man, bro. Like, straight up. So, I had enough of this shit, bro. Every, like, I've been saying it. It's always the same fucking people, bro. It's always these people. Twitter fingers, fam. You're never going to see them in person talking shit behind their screen with their purple fucking hair, bro. Yeah. Off me, bro. Get mm -hmm. off it, bro. And I'm happy Six Buzz called this guy out. Sorry, this guy. This day. Okay? <laughs> And yo, I'm not I'm not trying to chirp anyone that fucking uses pronouns, but every time there's an issue with these purple hair people, they got pronouns in their name. Yeah. So what's it gonna be? Like, what's it gonna no, be, no, bro? No. Yo, think, this shit's think, pissing me I off, think, bro. I think, listen, this is the person that's gonna teach your kid. Yeah. Which have is that. Crazy. Have that. Which is crazy. Yeah. No, you know what? Have I think, that, bro. I think I think like. I'm off this, bro. I, I think we got this guy. <laughs> this guy Jesus, bro. I think we have to start calling it out, bro. Yeah, because 100%. Because at the end of the day, yeah, we we get off this podcast and we talk shit off the mic, right? But, bro, we're here to try and educate and put, put our opinions out into the world, but not only put our own opinions, also help people feel comfortable with speaking their truth. 100%. And right? And people are so uncomfortable with speaking the truth nowadays. That's yeah, what I'm saying. That was bro. the big problem for me in Canada mm -hmm. because, you know, I'll be at a party and I'll be venting and people are like, yeah, I kind of like, yeah. They won't say it. <laughs> They'll be like, you yeah. know, but they won't say it. Mm -hmm. And then people are scared to, and I, I, you know, we, we all have our fair share of, of going off on our social media. Of course, speaking of course. Our voice, Because at the end of the day, like, we have a fucking voice. Yeah. God gave us a voice, so speak mm -hmm. it and use it. Exactly. That and, shit and, and triggered me, need, bro. And you don't need 5,000, 10,000, 100,000 followers, a blue check mark, da, 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 for, for your opinion or, or your, your beliefs to matter. Yeah. You got one follower. You don't have Instagram. It doesn't matter, right? Like, you, people got to stop being scared to speak their truth in public settings, on social media, whatever. Wh whether 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 they think the complete opposite of what I do, I respect it. 100%. I respect anybody, whether I agree with opinions and beliefs or not. No, that shit I don't agree with. I don't respect that person at all. <laughs> oh, no, no, hold on, that. hold on. That's that, Bro, that's that's not a belief. That's not an opinion. I that don't respect that. I don't, I, don't, I don't vouch for it. None of that. Yo, like, okay, let me, let me bring it back okay, quick, okay? Bro, right, bring it back, bring it back, bring it back. Like, I support BLM, and I also support freedom of choice. That matches up. You see what I'm saying? Like yeah. at least at least have an opinion that matches up. And if anyone's got a problem with what I'm saying, don't watch it. Number one. Number two, hit me up with a real account. Like hit me up with a real name, yeah. real person, Facts. real face. Yeah. So many people. You're gonna hit me with a burner, bro? Like really? Really? I'm out here showing my face, giving my voice, giving my name, I'll tell you where I live. I don't care. <laughs> come with come with a real Facts. fucking name, bro. Straight up. Cause that shit cheese me. You're gonna hit me with a burner account? Call me a racist. What what? 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 This whole racist shit, what? Bro, bro. How many times have you Everybody's been called a racist? Ra it, it, all the, 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 they all love to <laughs> What, is that, is that like the easiest thing to just put on someone? Yeah. Just like, boom, this guy's racist. a racist. Yeah. What, what are you talking about, bro? <laughs> what are you talking, you have purple hair, fam. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, no, but it's, it's crazy. And that, yeah, and, bro, bro that, that's the reason why. That's where I draw the line, straight up. That's well, where but, I draw the line. But that's the reason why people are scared to, to say what they want. Because me and you can sit and say, Oh, like yeah, uh, you know, I loved I loved that one policy Trump put into place, and it could have been like a monetary thing, yeah. like from like a complete money standpoint. You're racist. Oh, uh, you know, fuck, I I, I live in Miami. You're racist. racist. Oh, you're from Florida. You must be a must white be supremacist. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, bro, it's like I'm tired of it, bro. I'm tired yeah. of these people. And yo, your burner accounts aren't gonna do nothing, bro. Stay at home in your basement. Pick your balls, fam, if you have any. All right, you didn't and fuck them off, or... bro. Straight no, up. And what, but uh, what uh, what. Uh, this guy's cheese. What, cheese, what I what yeah. I want to say Lucky is, I can't smoke in here, bro. What I want, <laughs> what I want to say is this: I, I I know that a lot more people are against this fucking woke bullshit, and I think that we need to start speaking up. We need to start being honest in our opinions, 100%. And, and 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 because we're all sitting here, and not us, because we're three guys that will come in front of a camera and say what we want to say and put it out into the world. But there's a lot of people who agree with what we're saying, who are against this woke fucking bullshit, and and they're scared to say it. Lose a job, da, da, da. if you lose a job because you're you're not afraid to be a fucking pussy 
and speak your truth, that's not the job for you. Move to the next one. Let's go. That's how life works, right? If we're gonna hit sit, us up, fam, we'll if, hook you up. If, yeah, hit us up. We'll fucking. If you lost it. your job, hit us up. We're, we're, you know, we'll, we'll like that. Like that's the way the world works. If we stay in this in this world of sensitivity and yeah, not wanting to think, like, bro, we're oh, not gonna. Bro, move. my nails, bro. I'm like, bro, fuck off, bro. bro I'm and, off and, this, and man. And the whole thing with like speaking out and it's it, it, to a certain point where now people are just. They're getting they're getting silenced mm. by social media. Well, like, you see what happened with now, Trump. Trump was just yeah, on Nelk. Trump was on Nelk, and they took it down. And I, I'll be honest, when it, when Trump first came out, and I was watching the news, and I was I was one of these sheep. <laughs> I was like, "Fuck Trump." Yeah. And obviously, I don't agree with the some way of the he, things. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, of course. But then you come here, and you actually start hearing about the stuff that he's doing and what he actually did for the economy. Yeah. And, and you're like, he's the only outsider. Why is he being silent so much? Yeah. And you start to question it, you know, and, and then same thing would happen with Nelk or even people like the whole GoFundMe shit with the oh, trucker shit, convoy. Bro. That's Crazy. communism. If you guys want to know communism, yeah, that's yeah. communism. Yeah. Yeah. They like if you want to wake up and understand what's going on in our country. What happened with the truckers protest is a perfect example. Yes. They were using rhetoric and calling people racist and all this the, the nazis nazi supporters and all this stuff but then you go to the protest and it's literally canadians waving flags having timmy's yeah. it was canada day it was, it was literally like canada day and the fact that they painted it with the media like open your eyes like mm. if, if sure the whole pandemic da, 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 you may believe all stuff in the news but if you actually because a lot of the younger people went yeah. so if if that didn't, if you didn't open your eyes and see the way the mani the media was manipulating and painting this whole protest, and then on top of that, you know, the media manipulation and Trudeau the, saying all this fuck shit, fuck that guy. It's a dictator, <laughs> bro. He's literally a dictator. So him saying all that, okay, that's one thing. But then to go and ban your bank, like like freeze, freeze, bank freeze your bank account if you donated and then take the funds away. That's literally communism. That's yeah. communism 101. Doug, they're like, they're like, yeah, we're gonna take the funds and we're gonna donate it to a cause that we think makes yeah, sense. Yeah, like what guys, this is supposed to be a free country. Like open your eyes. Yeah. Like if, yeah. if if you guys didn't believe everything that we were saying in the last couple podcasts, yeah, you guys I, this should be an eye opener for you. How many bro? times we gotta have this episode? You know, what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so like, Jeez, bro, that's and, crazy. And, and you know what cheeses me too is like. <laughs> Lots of things cheese me clearly, guys. <laughs> but yo, when people when people try to just say like, oh, like you don't know how good you have it, or like you don't know what's happening. Like, listen, yo, I know that shit's fucked in the world. I know shit's fucked in other countries. I know there's war happening. Yeah. I know there's genocide happening, fam. But it doesn't mean we're gonna. We're but gonna, what? I just gotta like, shut up I'm, about my own spot now? Yeah. Well, I I, right? I put like, I put something online because everyone was like, oh, uh, you know, with the whole protesters like, Bella, you guys are you guys are complaining about the fact that they shut down the pro the trucker convoy. You don't even know how it's like to live in fucking this country or fucking Iran. And what you do, and like you do. No, no, no. But no, but then I made this point, and because obviously classic lefties, right? I'm like, all right. I'm like, so I'm like, riddle me this. So should should the LGBTQ community in Canada stop, you know, continuing to fight for their rights and 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 all that just because it's illegal to be gay in Iran? So should they just shut up because it's worse somewhere else? No, perfect example. No, bro. They should be allowed to fight, and and if they want more representation and they want to keep fighting for it, I'm. Do what you want, mm -hmm. and you should have the freedom to continue to fight for any cause you want. So, just because it's worse somewhere else doesn't mean you got to stop worrying about your own place, right? Because yeah. then when you do that, you're going to become the country that you that you were saying it's worse. You know what yes. I mean? You're going to become the Iran, yes. the Afghanistan, the fucking crazy countries with the radical people, right? So it's like, and I'll probably get canceled for saying that. I'm sure there's amazing people in all those countries. The media is fucking telling us different. I don't know. And, 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 but like the the whole thing of like freeze guys like I hope you understand to freeze a person's bank account you need a court order they, yes they put none they you they don't need it there's no real justification that they need so if and that's also why I've converted to crypto because crypto that it's first off it's DeFi so there, there's certain platforms that's not connected to your name I think that's that's how it should be that's the big so, thing so this, these are the reasons why yeah, I don't give them the rundown the yeah give them so the rundown first off the money that you put in the bank isn't really there. Because legally, they only have to keep 10% of your money that you put in, and they can loan it out nine times to other people. So that's the first thing. So let's say there's a whole economic collapse. Let's say it's a black swan event. Mm. 
all your pension, all your savings that are in the stock market, all this stuff that you've been putting your money into in the banking system is gone. And middle class, all the middle class people will 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 suffer. Yeah. And all the billionaires who are running these hedge funds that have all your 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 payment pension plan and all this stuff, they're the ones that are pumping up the price so they could pull their money out and then the middle class is going to be left holding the bag when this shit happens and something's going to happen very soon. Inflation's at an all-time high. Yep. We're, we're, we're talking potential World War III. Yeah. We're, we're lending out so much money. We're printing so much money with no real way to pay it. Yep. Mm-hmm. All these government sanctions are affecting the dollars, right? So that's why in the last episode I was saying, you know, buy gold and silver. And people are like, yeah, that's boring. And it is, <laughs> but... It is a curve against inflation and against all this government shit. Like, and then so on top of that, they lend out your money nine times. Your money's not really in the bank now. That they they could just if you don't agree with they what they're pushing and you protest against it, you're telling me that they could freeze your account. Yeah, bro, I'd snap, bro. And yeah. this is Canada. I'd like, snap, bro. If you told me this five years ago, I wouldn't have believed. I'd pull up at Scotia Bank, bro. You wouldn't even want to yeah, see that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I took all my money out the bank. Yeah. Like you know, unless it's a. You're you know, crypto mans I'm now, a eh? Crypto mans, you know, and there's ways people are like, oh, it's not real money. To, <laughs> like, I can get a loan right now on my crypto, ninety percent of value. I added like a one or two percent interest rate, and and I could get a wire to me with real money. Yeah. And there's also ways to cash it out for cash. You could buy gold with it. You could buy mm-hmm. a Lamborghini. My friend just bought a Lamborghini in crypto. People are like, it's not real money. It is real money. Yeah. And the government just paints this scary picture of it, but it's real freedom. And that's why I believe we're going down that route. And I believe the dollar day by day is getting worth less, less, and less with all the printing and inflation. Well, well, look, you, you look at, you look, okay, perfect example. Look at Russia. Their dollar is worth nothing. And it went exactly so imagine Literally the one middle class that they were saving their whole life with their their pension plans and their their stock portfolios yeah. and stuff. Everything just went boom. And then and then so that happened. So their the the Russian dollar, the ru- ruble or whatever ruble, it's called, yeah. is done. It, it's pretty much uh, it's it's demolished. It's worth nothing. And that happened like within a day or two yeah. days, right? So like you said, those people got fucked. And then word comes out, and now whether this is true or not, but I believe it. Russia's holding like billions of dollars of in gold. Of, uh, no gold and crypto, bro. Yeah, Russia's holding billions of dollars of crypto. Hundred percent. So now you start saying, oh, so the same currency y'all been telling us not to buy because because you, you're oh it's fake, it's thin air. Why 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 are governments holding it? Hundred percent, hundred percent. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like people need, people need holy, to adapt bro. sooner or later, guys. Cause yeah. Like, and 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 the digital dollar, baby. The digital dollar, and that's what they're moving towards. And we could get into the whole conspiracy of they're gonna crash our dollar, and they're gonna yeah. create a social credit system, and they're gonna they're gonna create their own digital currency. Well, mark this because they will happen. Mark yes, it. yes, they will happen. <laughs> yeah, right, you guys know it. And countries are moving towards it. I'm actually working with some um, Southern American countries on helping implement it for their country because in a lot of these Southern American countries. Like like thirty to fifty percent of people don't even own bank accounts in the, like in these yeah. in these developing countries. But now if all they have is the internet, now they can transact. And if you implement it in a country, it's actually empowering. And like I'm I'm for crypto for being in countries. I believe that crypto should be used in countries and used in everyday life. I, I support it because there's so many vehicles that you could take for investment yeah. that, that are empowering. You could you could buy crypto with your crypto. It's like it's amazing and the growth in it is also amazing. If you look at crypto as a macro, right? Yeah. We're at about a um you know a one percent adaption rate worldwide. Wow. Yeah. So at this at this adaption rate worldwide, Bitcoin is worth more than the biggest banks already. So um, so, so, true. so if you look at it from ten to twenty five years from now if you put your in now and we're at a 1% adoption rate, imagine the markets when we're at a 10% adoption rate, mm-hmm. 20, 30, 40, 50. Yeah. Like, like it's yeah. going to be cra- trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars. Well, it's funny. It's funny you, you say that. You made a great point. And this is something that one of our past guests, Swish from uh, Surf, he, he, he said, I'm very bullish on crypto and I love, you know, Bitcoin and the whole thing because it, it's giving people in developing countries an opportunity yes. to actually transact, like you said, right? So these are people that don't have bank accounts. They don't have driver's license to open up bank accounts, passports, this, this, that. But they do have cell phones. They do have internet, 100%. and that's all you need. Literally. You know what I mean? Literally. So it is actually empowering people, right? Which obviously scares the government, but but then going going back to Russia holding billions of dollars of crypto, and I'm sure all the other governments, they see it, they know what it is, they know it's what it's what they need, and they know it's the next step. So even they're adapting. So it's funny because they're adapting while telling you not to. 
and that, that's how our governments work, people. Like, <laughs> that's crazy. And, and if you truly believe that the government is working for you, yeah, nah, you're you already guys, wrong. like, this yeah. is it's 2022, <laughs> and, and you have to it's start fending for yourself and yeah. just start questioning things because we're in such a, a dark age, mm-hmm. it's very dark. There's some very dark things going on in this world, some transitions that are happening, yeah. right? And you have to just start looking out for yourself, and I think that's what crypto provides. It provides security for people. Yeah. You don't have to, you know, th- they don't get to, like, the government is the biggest mob. They're taking 40%, 50% of your income. For but what? W- with crypto, they don't even know because they can't track it. Yeah. That's also another why. There's a lot of tax benefits there. <laughs> you know? you keep that DL, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and the law, you know just what I mean? letting people know. That's you know, crazy. like, I... I, I, I d- I believe in taxes. Taxes are, are necessary to run society. Of course, of course. But, you know, I Only think a little bit, though. You know, not too yeah, much. Man. Not <laughs> too much. That's what I mean. 40 to 50%. That's just straight mafia. Mafia don't even tax that much. Not even them, bro. Not you even know? them. So, you know, you just got to start questioning the systems that we've been, the that, that have been implemented for the last 100 years when it comes to education. That is so worn out. The education system is so worn out. The banking system clearly showing lots of flaws. Yeah. And now the government is starting to manipulate it. Dollars, all this stuff that we've been taught uh, systemically yeah. you got to start questioning it and, and start adapting to the future and that's why this whole crypto thing yeah, i'm so bullish on it because it's gonna it's gonna help solve all these problems hey, you, you made a good point and actually daniel g and i keep bringing up our past guests they everyone makes their fucking great points he he said about the system the school system the banking systems we were we were like trained to not win they 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 taught us to stay in the system you know what i mean we, we were we were taught that we were taught to Go to school, nine to five, get a job, nine to five, get, uh, have a family as soon as possible, da, 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 get a house, put yourself in as much debt as you can, work to pay the bank back forever, probably die with debt, and you move on, right? We were not, we were not trained to win. We were not, uh, we were not put in positions to win. They, they literally put books in front of us that were teaching us shit that wasn't even fucking helpful, relevant, yeah. relevant yeah, nothing, right? So shit. it's like, so it's like. When when you finally can step out of the fucking matrix yeah. and look and say, holy fuck, everything I was taught in school, like people laugh about this, like oh, I didn't learn anything in school, bro. Really think yeah, about that, shit. like you know what I mean? Uh, the place that you were forced to be, yeah. The, the, and then and then post post secondary, the place that you paid and put yourself in debt at eighteen years old to be, you learned nothing 100 see that see that <laughs> meme i posted the other day where no. I, uh, waking up every day knowing i didn't have to go to school to open a business with that guy's face on it that's amazing. you didn't that see that so one funny. with kid's face that one. <laughs> but no, bro it's, it's true like, it's true though and, it's true. And if you go back in history i believe it was dale carnegie um he was like one of the richest guys yeah, in the yeah. World to ever exist. unreal um he i think he's the one who started like libraries and stuff okay and started the educational system i believe from what i read and when they were developing the educational system, he said, I want a nation of workers. Yeah. I want That's a what nation. they need, though. So so everything, if you really look at it, when they separate your desk in school, it's in line formation. They make you line up mm-hmm. in a line. For, get in the line. Why is the line? And the, the teacher's screaming at you to get in line. It's 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 si- like it's psychological, training. Yeah. It's psychological training. And even like and recess and shit, yeah. bell rings, go back inside, They're, come that, back and, in. And then when you go to a nine to five, it's the same shit. Yeah. You end up in line. Lunch, you break. Job. Like snack robots, time. Snack time. You get your break, and then you go snack home. Time. You it's go true. Snack. Quick <laughs> snack time, fam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love snack yeah. time, fam. And then you go home after that, and, and that's tr- the traditional way. So even me, like I went to college for one month, yeah, and I go. dropped out yeah. because I went to go learn business, mm-hmm. and I asked every single one of my teachers, "Have you ever owned a business?" And yeah. they said no. And in some of the classes, I was telling them shit. Yeah. So I was like, you know, mom, this isn't gonna work for me. And you know, my my family is traditional. My grandma's a teacher. I was the first one out of my family to step out of that. Yeah. Right. Um, but like, it's the, it was the best decision I ever made because, like I said, time is currency, and a lot of people are wasting five, ten years of of their life. More, they should bro. be taking taking risks. Yeah. Like Experience. People, yeah. Like when I talk to some people, then I'm like, "Yeah, what do you do?" And they're like, "Oh, I'm in school." I'm like, "Oh, sick. What do you do?" Oh, let's say law. law. And I was like, "Oh, how long do you have?" Oh, like another seven years. I'm like, mm, "What?" Yeah. You're like. 21, seven years, 28, you're going to just get into making money. So yeah. you're going to slave away seven years, 10 years of your life or however long it takes to get these degrees that guarantee no real success, Yeah. right? And with like law and doctors, you do need the education, of obviously. Yeah. Of course. But a lot of these things that people are going to school for, it's just a waste of your time. You're just doing it to but get then, that paper but then at here's the end. The, but then here's yeah, the thing. Yeah. Even, okay, well, like again, of course, we need lawyers in this world 100%. Yes. But, but on your point, like, yeah, so you go to school eight years to get that degree. You're coming out 27, 28 years old. 
but you're in debt, fam. So now the next five to ten years you're working yeah, are just to get longer, yourself maybe. just to get yourself out of debt. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's it, if you're just paying the debt and you have no, no but, other expenses. But you see what I'm trying to say? So it's like you look at it like that. But but I, again, I want to just go back to reiterating this point. Like when you look at something like, for example, I learned nothing in school. Like stop making it a joke. And actually take that in. I'm serious. Yeah, it's not a joke. It's not a real. fucking joke, right? Now you we, got me thinking, we bro. Got, <laughs> we got one. We got one at bat, bro. We got one life, and and you're laughing about years you wasted, and then and then and then while you're laughing about the years you wasted, you're wasting more. You're about to waste some more, yeah. yeah. Like it's it's bro. And, I, and guys, like like there's only a certain period of life where you could take certain risks. Yes. Right. Yeah. And your twenties. In my opinion, you're supposed to be taking risks, trying new things, mm -hmm. building your network, focusing on fitness, focusing on your health, because health is wealth. Yep. Your health, networking, trying different things, and just being free and taking those risks and having fun. Yep. You know, I think that's really what your 20s are meant for. And then there's people slaving away their 20s. And it's okay to slave away your 20s if you're working towards the right goal and you have your vision and a yep. plan. Yep. Like, I was like, and, and school isn't completely bad if you have a plan. Like, And then this is what I tell people. School isn't a key to success it's a tool okay right so if you know how to use that tool and you're like okay i'm gonna go learn to be this so i can own this business and learn the industry or whatever that may be then go do school yeah. but to think that school is just like an automatic key to success it's not it's it really fake isn't. news it's fam. fake news well <laughs> you know it's funny we're just quickly going back to the school thing like you were saying like line up da -da 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 -da, whatever like it's funny you notice that all of the more uh, the people who have similar mindsets to us, business business owners, entrepreneurs, they were the kids in school that were looked at as the fucking idiots. Mm -hmm. They didn't follow rules. Outcast this, this, or whatever. Outcast. Yeah. This, this, this kid is never going to do anything in his life. He can't even listen. Da, 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 da. It's like, bro, because look at the person standing in front of the class teaching you. Fam, what have they ever achieved? Fam, I make more money than all the teachers out there that were teaching me. <laughs> Sorry, bro. In a month. Sorry, with all, with in all a that. Month. With, with in all, a month. With all that, bro. <laughs> Fuck all that, bro. Like, you know what I mean? Like, no, real shit, though. Like, it's... It's you know we're, we're we're bosses and we take we took the risk we yeah. deserve this shit and, and, people, and we every day we continue to take yes, the risk yes and and you yeah. know tomorrow we could we could go broke yeah, yeah. you know and it's not gonna take, be all right it's gonna know, be all right yeah, it's gonna be all right because why because we invest in ourselves and mm. we believe in ourselves yeah right and no matter what whether it's the business that we're doing now we'll figure out a way yeah and and that's got like guys investing in yourself is that you'll get that's the biggest ROI you will ever get in your life nice. yeah paying for that nice. course paying for that mentorship. Uh, buying those books, investing your time into bettering yourself, bettering your mindset, bettering your emotional your emotional intelligence, not being so susceptible and reactive to your environment. Like one thing, like I used to have horrible um, anger issues yeah. when I was a kid. I was very like outrageous and angry and punching shit. And then you know I had a couple instances where where like close instances where I almost went to jail for a couple things and. It made me really sit down, and that's where I found meditation and self help. Yeah, and that's what changed my life. Like being able to, to not be so reactive to your environment because we can't control our environment, but we can control how we react to it. True. And, and they don't teach you this shit in school. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. don't teach you to meditate. Come they don't on, teach bro. you. They don't teach you to write out your flaws on paper and figure out solutions to them. They don't teach you how to change your habits mm -hmm. right they just teach you bullshit it's all like <laughs> social studies fam social, it's like, yeah. <laughs> and, and even that we even learning that, about bro even that they're uh, fucking up with these days but right. what do you mean what are they fucking up with even social studies fam oh even social studies yeah yeah <laughs> even everything about? bro I, i'm saying bro I'm yo i seen about. another I, I see i love memes bro i seen another meme it's like yo i went another day without using the pythagorean theorem or whatever like the, the, math, <laughs> the, the fucking equation they teach you shit. yo but I, I yo i saw i saw you posted yesterday you posted a jokes one you're like yo Shoes, eight bills. iPhone, seven bills. Transportation, feet. <laughs> Home, less. <laughs> so it's like, yo, like pe people don't know, even know how to spend their money and, and what to invest on, right? And that's, that's going back to that. And a lot of it, like we're taught this through culture and through schooling systems mm -hmm. to not invest. And there's a, like, so for another, going back to the school subject, it's like um, for grade 12, I, I took uh, workplace math. So typically workplace is like, there's like academic applied and then workplace. Workplace is for like the people that have learning disabilities and all this stuff. Typically, I went to math, right? Because okay. I knew I wasn't going to, I need, on fam, all I need to know is add, subtract, divide, and <laughs> That's multiply. It. That's, That's it. it. That's all you need. That's it. Yep. So I was like, yeah, let me go take workplace math. And, you know, people like, everyone's like, oh, like, you know, are you dumb and all this <laughs> stuff? And I'm like, I'm like, whatever. And then I go and they're teaching me about mortgages. They're teaching me about interest, compound interest. And I was like, this is, and people are downing this class because yeah. it's for the slow kids. Yeah. 
Meanwhile, I'm learning real life stuff, but then the kids at academic yeah. are learning bullshit. X, Y, Z. Yeah, trying to measure a triangle, fam. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> what are you talking about? Yo, tell me about the triangle. Tell me more about the triangle. Yeah, that's like, that's crazy. You know, so like it's just it's it's crazy. These systems that have been put in place are so outdated. And yeah, like like I said, invest in yourself and just start questioning questioning the things around us and the things that have been implemented before us even from our family our parents like they didn't know better they didn't yeah. have technology they didn't have the opportunity that we have so it's up to you to change that in your in your family yeah and i think i think that just to add on to that it comes down to a gut feeling bro and you know you can talk about the last things that have the things that have happened over the last two years you know anything financial things this covid bullshit blah blah, blah all this stuff like listen we really know deep down like what's real and what's not we have gut feelings right and and it's time to act on them. Stop just stop just sitting in your room thinking about it all stoned. You're like, oh, I know this is kind of fucked up, but oh, I'm just gonna go to the club this weekend. <laughs> it's like, nah, bro. It's like, act on it. You if you if you feel something is wrong, if you feel like things aren't right, be honest, be open about it, and, and make decisions. Because again, I want to go back to it. Like we always said, with, uh, and I'll use this fucking COVID shit in Canada as, as a as a as a goalpost or whatever an example. There was a huge silent majority. Everybody I used to talk to early on, one year into it, six months into it, this is fucked, this is bullshit, blah, 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 whatever. I don't, I don't, you know, government's doing this, government's doing that, blah, 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 blah. But it's like, but then y'all were just going back to your same old life, not making any changes, not, not asking any questions, talking about it in secret. It's like, if you know something's wrong, be open and honest about it. 100%. You know I mean? Yo, we're, the only, we're the only species with a gut feeling. You know that? Really? We're the only species on earth with a gut feeling. Yeah, bro. You think a little lizard running around? No, but I'm saying, but it's, for, it's <laughs> yeah. for a reason. You no, know what yes. I mean? There's well, a reason there's a for that. a higher intelligence. And another thing, like, to people, what I recommend, and I think during the pandemic, people did start uh, tuning into the spirituality side. Yeah. But it's a big part, like, in business, it plays a huge part in my business decisions. Yeah. Because yeah. when things don't feel right, like, there's a, there's 100%. a, there's a higher, it's an energy there's thing, a higher bro. intelligence, and yeah. I don't know what it is. You could call it God. You could call it whatever you want. Yeah. There's <clears> reasons <throat> that we have these feelings. You have to be in tune and be conscious enough to read it yeah. and start reading the signs because I believe that this, this experience of life, there's signs and messages. And, like, when you see all these crazy guys, like, you know, Kanye and all these really successful people talking about simulations and all this stuff... It's because when you break out of it and you see it, because it's like a it, movie, it's, it's like, like a movie. You're like, yeah. whoa! You see it for what it is. You're like, whoa, right? So, you know, break out of that and just start questioning stuff and like invest in yourself and 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 yeah. you know, better yourself. That's the best investment you could ever make. Would you you post uh you posted DJ Khaled today? What do you say? They didn't see it. God did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, that, he is my spirit animal, bro. That guy is a goat, man. Like, and you know, he he. Uh, he, he actually inspires me a lot when it comes to outlook and perspective and, and the way to move. He's just, like, so positive. Mm. And when you... And, like, people have to understand that, like, the feelings and thoughts, like, your thoughts are so strong. And going back to manifestation and spirituality, if you have negative thoughts, those things will manifest into reality. Yep. Yep. So there's something that's that I, I, I live by called delusional optimism. And, yep. you know, people usually put a negative connotation on delusion. Yes. Right. But when you look at all the highly effective and successful people, they have a certain type of delusion, whether it comes to their business or themselves. And delusional optimism to me is that no matter what happens, I believe that it's for the greater good. No matter what happens, I could get hit by a car tomorrow. I was like, oh, there was something meant to happen from that. And when you when you structure your brain to think that something is good is going to come out of anything. Yeah. That's how you that's how you, you know, you be, do great things in times like this. Yeah. Like, you know, when the pandemic first happened, I was locked down in my room. I couldn't go out, you know, do nightlife and the stuff that I was doing before. And like a lot of people just took it as a negative and got depressed and fell into this hole. And I said, you know, this is for a reason. Mm -hmm. But then when you subconsciously believe that something good is going to come out of it. And now look at us now. Yeah. Right? I believe that something good was going to come out of it i was optimistic i was delusionally optimistic about whatever happened yeah and then you you subconsciously just make the right decisions to be able to innovate in situations yeah. i think uh kanye is a fucking perfect example this guy's like i'm gonna be the next disney <laughs> i'm gonna be the next apple and people are like this guy's delusional but this man was singing it for time bro but but but, but look like at yeah. the end of the day now he's a multi-billionaire multi multi-billionaire with uh, partnerships with Gap, Adidas, fucking Balenciaga, like anybody, what? anybody who wants, really. Kim K X Ting, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> not bad, not bad at all. Yo, let uh, me say something though. I'm gonna run it back a bit, yo, for all my for all my haters out there. Yeah, run it back. 
I don't give a fuck if you have purple hair, all right? <laughs> <laughs> to go back for real, okay? No, no, let me say something. Because one day I'm going to be like Joe Rogan and you guys going to try to cancel me from fucking 100 episodes before, all right? I don't give a fuck you have purple hair. I don't give a fuck you have pronouns, all right? I give a fuck if you're trying to segregate kids, bro. You know what I mean? 100%, Children, bro. 100%. That's where I draw the line. You want to come and segregate me and this guy and us and talk yeah. shit, go nuts, bro. But these kids that don't even know what's going yeah, on. Yeah, children. No, no, no. The children are the, the highest affected. That's next up. Those are next thing. up. Like yeah. this whole... At this whole thing with the whole pandemic, like the children are the ones truly suffering, man. Yeah, 100%. that's it. Because, like, like they don't know better. They don't know anything. Yeah, they're just doing as they're told, bro. And and then you're you're putting masks on them and all this stuff. You're, telling, just, you're, you're it's, separating. It's, so that's my issue, all right? You have purple hair. All right, keep your purple hair. But if you have purple hair and you're trying to segregate kids, I'm coming after your purple hair. You see, what I'm saying like, <laughs> yeah, like well, that's why that's why well, that's why I draw the fucking well, line, listen, bro. The listen. kids, those the children, bro. Well, listen, listen. You Stop wanna, that. No, no, no. I agree. I'm, I'm just saying. You want to cancel me at the end of the day? S- some somebody like that guy, Peter, whatever his no, name is. No, someone like that day. So no, but someone oh, that person, <laughs> all right, that thing, he uh, he he seems to be a part of a certain group of people. That's all I'm gonna say. That's all you want to say. That's it. So if you want to cancel me for <laughs> calling out people with fucking crazy radical ideologies, I think we're gonna look back at this episode in ten years and be like, yo, these motherfuckers were right sitting in this fucking room. Who would have thought? Except then you're gonna find be like, yo, where are these guys today? And it's gonna be us three on a fucking yacht, dog. <laughs> yeah, the, three, the size of fucking Toronto. Three hundred <laughs> fucking feet long, bro. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And then <laughs> I'm, gonna have, I'm gonna have purple hair. Then trust me. <laughs> then, I'll, then I'm gonna be the one with the purple hair. All right. <laughs> nah, but I'll man. never fucking segregate anyone. You know what never, I mean? Never. And and to attack children, bro. You guys are crazy, bro. You yeah. guys, you guys have bad karma coming your way. I'll tell you that straight up, man. Because. Mm. That's dangerous, man. You fucking with kids, bro. That's next up. That's our generation. That's who's gonna build our world. You know what I mean? So that's the problem I have. I don't care if you have pronouns. You use any fucking. I'm fucking Bello Bellettes. Those are my pronouns, bro. You <laughs> fucking know. So use whatever pronouns you want. Dye your hair, whatever. But the minute you try to segregate children, bro, I draw the line, and you could tell I'm cheesed right now. So yo, don't do that. Trust me. <laughs> don't do that, yo. Because like, listen, that's bad, bro. Sorry, bro. I had to go off there because yeah, like, no, yo, that's... children's. A t- I'm not even a parent, bro. If I was a parent, bro, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have big issues. And yo, I have I have hundreds of parents, hundreds of moms and dads that they message took their me. kids out of school, some of bro. them, and I respect them for yeah. that, bro. Yeah. I have I have hundreds of parents in my DMs all day saying like, you look like, thank you for speaking up, thank you for talking about this. I don't know what I'm gonna do with my kid. I'm trying to homeschool one. I'm trying to do a next one. I don't have the money to do this. Yeah, Dude. all because all because someone wants to say, yo, you know what? I'm the teacher now. Let's let's split it up. Yeah. I'm the teacher. Yeah. It's so bad. Teaching man. what, bro? What are you teaching? <laughs> they, te- te- they they teach fear, and that's that's what it, it is. bro. And that's like, why we are where we are because fear is one of the strongest emotions that people use in sales. Of yeah. course. When I did when I was learning sales and psychology, if if the buyer isn't isn't willing to buy, you poke at their fears. Yeah. yeah. So when you see these people selling whatever it is, they poke at your fears. When you're selling a financial product. They, they poke your fear of being broke. So yep. invest in this and do this. So do you want to stay broke? Yeah. Right? <laughs> when, yeah. when, when, when they start selling health products, it's like, do you want to get fat? Do you want to It's the same. Bro. Even it's with marketing, it, oh, you don't you don't want to market your business, fears, but it's going to go fears, bankrupt. Yo. And fear. So so I think we're, we're really like projecting this 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 fear method of selling in, in the last two years when it comes to this whole pandemic. I think it's all based around fear and that's how they've got the biggest control because yeah. they're like, don't kill your grandma. Like, yeah. watch out for your family. Fam, your grandma's it's on a fear. jet ski in South Beach, <laughs> Literally, <fam>. literally, <laughs> man. My grandma caught COVID and I'm very, very fortunate that she's healthy and she survived and mm-hmm. she was fine, completely fine. I know some people were less fortunate and, you know, made their souls rest. Yeah. But, you know, I was scared to go hug my grandma a year ago, and now my grandma's in Miami with jet skis in a strip club with no mask, throwing ones, dirty ones with all these germs and COVID, throwing ones, and she's back home. She's fine. She tested negative. So, what's where? where, (laughs) There's no answers anymore. We'll 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 end it with this. The Pfizer papers are released. You want to do some research? Do your research. <laughs> what, what happened to all the, uh, do, trust the science? Yeah, 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 yeah. They're yeah. there. It's the there science if you want to read it. There, so. it's they they pick and choose. The people pick and choose, fam. Yeah, you know they what pick I mean? and choose, man. But, crazy. Kane, fam, because yeah. I know we could really go forever out here. I know. I want it, first of all, I want to say thank you for coming on again. Thank you guys for having me, man. Dude, I, yeah. I feel like this relationship that we're building and this, um, you know, the, it, with your whole podcast, I feel like 
we're gonna look back years oh, from bro, now because we're be gonna jokes. keep doing these episodes <laughs> and course. seeing the growth and evolution yeah. of us three. Yeah. And like it's gonna be iconic. No man, man. I, 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 well, you, you took the words out of my mouth. I was gonna say it's just crazy that every time we sit down with you and do one of these is the third one now. Like just the growth is crazy, man. Yeah. And 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 whether that's from a financial perspective or just a mindset perspective, like and I same thing with you guys, man. Like <laughs> we, you know we were in lockdown Canada and you guys are now on the bright side, Sunshine State. Yes, you know what yes, I mean. Sir, and no, question: man. So how do you guys like it? Quickly. <sighs> Bro, look at look at me right now. So We're, uh, <laughs> I got a hat on that says "Crypto Baby Family." Like, yo, oh, I'm, I'm living my best life right now. <laughs> nah, for real, like it's energy out here. Um, we actually like, yo, everyone we meet out here, it's like we we end the conversation with them, and we're like, yo, like. If we weren't here, we wouldn't have met that person and got that vibe. And 100%. Bro, the energy with everyone we meet here... Miami is just good vibes. ...is next level. And obviously, you know, like, we like to be inspired with our surroundings. So being here for that, bro, 100%. like... 100%. When you got the kind of people in this city that, that are here right now, when you got the kind of money being spent in this city... Bro, this is like... I'm yeah. so glad you guys came down here. I think we're going to do amazing things. <laughs> I'm so happy, bro. bro. I'm so happy. We're going to look back on these... Laugh at them, you know what I mean. I'm gonna have yeah. purple hair by then. We already <laughs> fucking know. Um, but yo, pleasure, bro, yeah, and congrats man. on all your success, yeah, bro. Man. You Thank know what you. I mean. Continue and, uh, to grow. And yeah, listen, we'll we'll, we'll have you back for sure. Hundred percent. I'll be on a yacht next time. Though. I'll be 100%. on a yacht. Hundred percent. And uh, listen, with that, noosh, we fucking out. <laughs>